talk about something that's really important. I want to talk about something that really doesn't get talked about enough. And I want to talk about it here with you. And I think we can all relate to this in some way or another. And that's mental health and mental illness. I really don't think we talk about it enough as a society. I took up vlogging for many different reasons. One being that I suffer from social anxiety and I've, so, I've suffered from social anxiety for such a long time. I would say that a lot of the social anxiety I experienced stems from middle school. In elementary school, I was more or less like the class clown. I loved making people laugh. And I still love making people laugh to this day. Transitioning into middle school wasn't easy though. It was honestly something that was just taking me out of my element and throwing me into a classroom full of people I'd never even met in my life. A lot of the kids that I went to school with at that point and in the classes that I was in went to different schools than I did when we were in elementary school. They didn't look at me the same way as the people or the kids that I went to school with at that time. They didn't look at me the same way they did. They didn't know how to take me. So then there came the bully. The fact of the matter is, is I've experienced that type of thing in middle school where it made me not feel as confident enough. And it made me feel anxiety every time I went to a social get together. So even throughout my high school uh, years up to even early adulthood, I avoided a lot of social get togethers, a lot of parties, extracurricular activities at school and I avoided them because I didn't like the way I felt. I didn't like feeling the walls closing in on me. I didn't like the way, you know, you would just get that that sense of dread, the the waves of anxiety kind of rolling over you. I didn't like the feeling of people looking at me and just maybe going, oh, look at this guy. I didn't like the thought that somebody was thinking negative of me at that time. I didn't like the thought that somebody was going to pinpoint something about me and make it the joke of the night or the day or whatever the, 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 the scenario wise. And so, you know, with that being said, I, I also suffer from like seasonal depression and other anxiety just in general. And I think we can all relate to stress, no matter if it's the job, no matter if it's your family, no matter what situation you're in. I think we've all experienced something along those lines. It's the way you cope that will make the difference. So going back to the social anxiety, and I know there's a lot of you out there that experience this. I'm not alone. And please don't feel like you are either. You're not. Social anxiety will beat you down and it will take control of you and it will keep you under its thumb for as long as you allow it to. I have many different ways I cope with social anxiety. There's been so many times where I look back and I go, man, I wish I could have been out in social gatherings and experienced things differently and maybe enjoyed my life a little bit more than I did. I look back at my 20s and I think back to my, my 20s and I go, wow, I wish that I would have done things a little bit differently because they flew on by so fast that before I knew it, I was 29 turning 30 and I was like, what did I do in my 20s? I wish I would have experienced things differently in the light of going to different venues, going to different events. Now I've gone to events and stuff like that and I have enjoyed some good shows, but I feel like I could have enjoyed them more if I didn't feel the pressure of social anxiety. So last year when this whole thing was happening with COVID still and it, it was kind of died down last summer, we went to a show here in Rochester. It was awesome. It was with local bands and it was great. And I actually, for one of the first times in my life, did something I never thought I would do. So I run a podcast with my buddies. We actually got permission to set up a table. That was freeing. That was so freeing to be able to set up a table. Some people know our podcast, others don't. Which, even the podcast itself was freeing because I don't really talk much. I don't socialize like that. And I think it helped me. So doing this table at this venue, with this event going on, it was great because I got to meet a lot of people. I got to talk to a lot of people, tell them what I'm about, like what I like to do. We collectively loved the same music we were there for. It was a freaking blast. Social anxiety will deter you from those type of things. It will make you not want to approach people. It will make you not want to be approached by people. It will make you feel like you're inferior 
to everybody else. It will make you feel unwanted. So with that being said, social anxiety, how do you control it? How do you contain it? How do you make it so that way you're not controlled by social anxiety? Here's a few things I do. For one, take up a hobby, such as vlogging or podcasting. This alone will help you in the right direction. Why? Because when the camera's rolling, like it is now, you know that there's gonna be people that are gonna see this, listen to it, etc., etc. Granted, you're not here with me now. I know in my brain that somebody, which is you, is going to listen to me, watch me, and God knows what you'll be doing. You might be judging me. Who knows? Maybe you look at me and go, <laughs> he's wearing a tracksuit, Adidas. Or, <laughs> look at that beard. Or, jeez, that hat. Speaking of hats, here's another thing. Find a piece of clothing that might help you feel comfortable. Yes, I love this hat because I've actually had this hat for four years. And you might be wondering what, what this hat is. It's actually from Finley Hats, uh, based in Oregon. Great hat company, I would definitely suggest it. Not endorsed by them anyway. I just think they're great hats. I like my hats because it makes me feel comfortable. It's kind of like a safe piece of clothing for me. I feel like when I wear this hat, I'm like incognito. I know that might sound ridiculous, but trust me. Find something you like that you find stylish, and maybe you too can go out in public and not feel like you're out in the open, like you're exposed. Because when I have my hat off, I feel exposed. Now in my other videos, I sometimes wear the hat. I sometimes don't wear the hat. And I do that because it's an exercise for me to be like, hey, I need to just learn to not have to wear a hat all the time. And that's fine. You take things in steps. You can't always think to yourself, I always have to wear this hat. It's also freeing to be able to go around and not wear a hat and feel comfortable. Sunglasses. I like wearing them during the day. It helps me feel comfortable, secure, and I can feel like I'm not being watched. I guess you could say this is cope number three for me, is to learn to kind of control your eyes if you have a social anxiety that's preventing you from eye contact, to just look into someone's eyes and just do it. It's kind of like looking into this camera. It's almost like I'm looking into your eyes. It's different because it's a camera, but it's something that you kind of have to learn because if you don't, you will then just let social anxiety rule you. So clothing that makes you feel comfortable in public, eye contacts, major, hobbies. But the whole one reason that I started this YouTube channel to start vlogging, and I've had YouTube channels in the past, this channel itself is something that I wanted to start because not only is vlogging something that helps me creatively, where I can like be a filmmaker, but it helps me cope with my social anxieties. It helps me get out there. It helps me experience new things. And I'm hoping that I can help you experience things differently too, and maybe actually give some advice to you as to how to cope with some of these anxieties. And I would appreciate it if you just real quick hit that subscribe and that bell for all the good times. Please leave a comment down below what you do to cope with your social anxieties or any type of mental illness, depression, anything at all, just down below. Let's, uh, let's help each other out. How do you cope with some of these anxieties? How do you cope being in public and not feel uncomfortable? Yeah. Them's the cats. I gotta make sure these cats are good, so I'll see you next time. Later, taters.